Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at today here is some of the issues that bring us eventually to the situation in Pearl Harbor. Now, the first thing we have to understand is that Pearl Harbor is not some sort of decision of Japan just magically out of nowhere to come and attack the United States. This has a very, very long history as far as why December 7th happens. And a lot of it begins in 1931 when Japan first initially decides to attack Manchuria and they're trying to widen out their empire. By 37, Japan had invaded China. And for the most part, the United States just looks the other way. They, again, it's that isolationist viewpoint of it's not our problem. We're not going to have to worry about it. There was the Panay incident where the Japanese aircraft attacked the United States gunship. Uh, the reality is, though, the United States just accepted their apology and just moves on from there. However, things continue to become more and more serious. Japan attacks Indochina in 1940. So as a result, the United States responds by placing an embargo on oil and any sort of aviation fuel to Japan. This is an absolutely critical aspect that happens here because Japan, despite its military strength, is a nation that does not have a whole lot of natural resources. That's part of the reason why they were engaging in those imperialistic actions all throughout the Far East in the 1930s. So we uh, get away from giving them any sort of oil. FDR freezes any of the Japanese bank accounts to the United States. So we're trying to really put a hurt on these guys economically. And in 1941, Japan undergoes a leadership change. Hideki Tojo, who had been the former military commander, now becomes the prime minister and starts going through some diplomatic discussions with the United States, trying to move toward peace. Well, eventually those talks are going to break down because neither of those sides are really going to uh, be willing to bend on the demands that it wants in order to make any of this happen. Well, <clears throat> while that is all going on, Tojo, again, given his military understanding, starts to make attacks plans on America. The fact of it is that Japan needs to have the resources that exist in the Dutch East Indies, but because of that, because of the United States and the approach that they've uh, taken concerning you are not going to be imperialistic. You're not going to uh, continue to take over these areas. Tojo realizes that they're not going to be able to get the Dutch East Indies and the needed oil there without the United States being out of commission. So Tojo goes ahead and makes the plan to attack the major Pacific naval base of the United States while at Pearl Harbor. And the theory behind all of this was they were going to take a massive strike to the American forces by surprise. So on December 7th of 1941, Japan starts its attack on Pearl Harbor. And by 7.55, Japanese aircraft begin dropping their bombs on American battleships stationed in Pearl Harbor. And they had actually specially outfitted some of their torpedoes. Part of the reason why Pearl Harbor um, wasn't necessarily expecting attack was because of the depth or lack of depth, you might say, of the uh, area that the battleships were stationed in is you couldn't really fire a conventional torpedo. Well, the Japanese had actually outfitted some of their torpedoes, especially to work in those low waters. And when they attack at Pearl Harbor, there are 70 battleships, eight warships, two cruisers, 29 destroyers, five subs, and 400 planes at Pearl Harbor. Essentially, it is the heart of our Pacific fleet. And the attack, which takes place in two waves, is an incredible success for Japan. They destroy 188 aircraft, they destroy significantly. They hit a lot of the uh, battleships. The USS Arizona, USS Oklahoma are both total losses. The USS Utah is a major loss, though it will eventually be repaired. There's going to be 2,500 individuals that are going to be killed as a result of Japanese uh, actions at Pearl Harbor. And the big thing that this does, and this is where Japan is really focused on, is that this is essentially going to put our fleet out of commission for six months. And you can see here what this is, is a map of Pearl Harbor, how it would have looked when the Japanese would have uh, come in. You can see right here, this is the area that Japan is most concerned about. This is what is referred to as Battleship Row. These are where the um, biggest and strongest American naval ships would have been stationed. And that was a major focal point for the Japanese as far as their attacks went. Now, just a couple things here. Um, 
just giving you an overview on how this attack would have worked. Um, Japan really kind of has three major focal points on how they're going to attack. You can see right here, we mentioned the torpedoes. Again, the specially outfitted torpedoes in order to work in uh, less than 12 feet of water there. So, or I'm sorry, uh, by that what I mean is they're only going to dive to 12 feet of depth so that they're going to be able then to effectively hit these battleships. The dive bombers here, and then you can also see here, um, they were going to attack some of the major airfields that were in Pearl Harbor. What this is here is this is a picture from one of the air bases at Pearl Harbor, and you can see that here and here and here, um, the holes in the glass, those are actually still bullet holes from, and you can see a few others here and here, those are actually still bullet holes from December 7th um, that as a result of the actions, you know, they were never repaired, and then by the time it got to the point to repair them, um, the United States Navy made a decision to leave those up. Uh, somewhat it is a, a memory of what happened on that day. You can see here, this is just a chart on the number of individuals that were impacted as a result of Pearl Harbor. Uh, there were over 2,000 Navy individuals killed, over 700 wounded. Um, eight of the battleships on battleships, Battleship Row were hit. The Arizona and the Oklahoma are going to end up being total losses. The other six are going to be able to be uh, repaired and put into place. Now, despite the success that Japan has at Pearl Harbor, things, in all honesty, could have been much worse. The fact of it is that uh, Tojo and, and their leaders had kind of called off a third wave on Pearl Harbor. There were actually two distinct waves. Uh, the first one contained 180 fighter pilots. The second one had 170. The reality of it is, though, that third wave really might have found the aircraft carriers and the heavy cruisers that were not in Bay at Pearl Harbor that day. And they didn't do any supply to the fuel supply or maintenance facilities at Pearl Harbor. And the critical aspect of that is, as we talked about earlier, we saw that six of those battleships were hit. I'm sorry, six of those battleships were eventually be able to be recommissioned. Well, if you would have taken out the maintenance facilities, those battleships never get recommissioned. And then obviously that puts our uh, Pacific fleet in even more of a precarious situation. And then the reality of it is, uh, after today, and, and it really almost signals the beginning of that, really the biggest thing for naval fleets at this point in time are going to be their aircraft carriers. Um, there's going to be a number of battles in the Pacific where it is simply aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier, and the two battleships never actually see each other. I um, wanted to include this quote. Um, it is hanging on a wall inside the museum at Pearl Harbor, uh, and it was a quote by one of the admirals who were at Pearl Harbor. He said, in the first six to 12 months of a war with the United States and Great Britain, I will run wild and win victory after victory. But then if the war continues after that, I have no expectation of success. The reality is Japan knew that this was really their one shot to try and put the United States out of commission. And if the United States was able to get back up off their feet, or back up on their feet rather, Japan was in pretty bad shape because of the military capacity that the United States would eventually have. Uh, this here is a memorial that exists in Resident Pearl Harbor to the USS Arizona. The Arizona was almost a complete loss that, uh, uh, you know, it was one of the, the big focal points for the Japanese. Um, but this is just a memorial to the USS Arizona. And you can see here as well um, a marker there. There are actually markers all throughout that area um, where Battleship Row would have been. This is oil that is actually still leaking from the USS Arizona. It's referred to as Tears of the Arizona, and, and they've been leaking really since the um, fall of the Arizona on December 7th, and they've actually just allowed it to continue to leak uh, as a sign of memorial of um, the USS Arizona. Now, the very last thing here, uh, FDR at this point after Pearl Harbor really has no choice but to go to Congress and ask for declaration of war. It's nearly a unanimous vote. There's one person um, that does not vote in favor of war. And the reality of it is this event is going to bring the United States all together, it kills this whole concept of isolationism, and America is now headfirst into this war um, with both Germany and Japan. Thank you.